Welcome to this bird profile, where we'll take a brief look at the unique natural history of the red-headed woodpecker. The red-headed woodpecker was chosen as a result of the photo that you see being the winner of the 2021 Mug Club Photo Contest. Congratulations to Doug Kuiper who took the photo on May 16, 2021 at Quincy Park near Holland in Ottawa County, Michigan. Doug's photo is featured on the 2022 Coffee with the Birds Mug Club Members Mug. You can find out more about the Mug Club and Coffee with the Birds at miottawa.org slash birding. Let's first take a look at how to identify the red-headed woodpecker. Both male and female red-headed woodpeckers are handsomely marked with black and white on the back, a white belly, and a very deep red, solid red head. In flight, red-headed woodpeckers reveal white on the secondaries of their wings, flashing in the sunlight. Juveniles have gray heads and a lot of gray where there normally is black on the back. They obtain their red head after about a year of age. Red-headed woodpeckers have several very distinct calls. The first is a very forced, weird call note. Take a listen. <coughs> Additionally, they communicate with members of their family with a lot of rattling calls like this. They also communicate territory both with their own family but also with surrounding woodpeckers by choosing a dead snag and drumming on it such as you see on the left picture. Many people mistakenly call the red-bellied woodpecker a red-headed woodpecker. However, I'm going to point out a few differences here. The red-bellied woodpecker certainly does have red on its head, but it's more of a cap that runs from the beak all the way down to the nape of the neck, not covering the sides of the head. The female, on the other hand, has a gray forehead and only red on the back of the head. Red-bellied woodpeckers are more common at our feeders and neighborhoods and in local forests as well. They also have a black and white striped almost zebra pattern on their backs rather than the big solid patches of black and white. Look for these guys at your feeders. Red-headed woodpeckers rarely do come to feeders. Also listen to the call. Rather than the weir Call, which is a very forced sounding call of the red-headed woodpecker, the red-bellied woodpecker has a toned down whirr call note. So while they're similar, it sounds like the red-headed woodpecker is actually forcefully pushing its call out, whereas the red-bellied woodpecker is more relaxed as it gives its call. The red-bellied woodpecker, I'll admit, is a poorly named bird. It is named for the very small rosy patch on the breast of the bird, which is not often seen as they are often perched up against the side of the trunk of a tree. The range of the red-headed woodpecker is all across the eastern United States, but does extend into the Great Plains of the West, especially in summer where their range extends for nesting into the northern parts of the east and into the northwest part in the Great Plains. As you can see by the abundance map on the bottom with data from eBird, during the nesting season the highest concentration of their population is in the Great Plains in the northwest part of their range. Red-headed woodpeckers are a bit more specific as to the habitat requirements for breeding. They prefer open pine barrens, 
or oak barrens habitats, which have more of a savanna-like feel to them, with open grass between widely spaced trees. A major requirement for them in this habitat is that they must have an abundance of dead trees, snags, particularly ones that do not have any bark left on them. This is thought to deter snakes from climbing the trees and getting into the nests to eat their eggs or nestlings. This habitat is best maintained with the presence of periodic fires. The fires keep the wide open spacing of the trees and help grasses to grow there. This maintains a sunnier, more wide open environment in which these woodpeckers can thrive. Red-headed woodpeckers have also benefited from the presence of wooden fences and even utility poles for nesting. So where dead trees were not abundant, they would utilize those resources for nesting. In fact, their range followed and expanded along utility pole lines as they expanded west. For nesting, the males select the site and attract the female to it. And if she accepts, then they nest together. For about the next two weeks, both male and female will help to excavate the nest. The cavity can end up being about three to six inches across and up to 16 inches deep, even though the entrance hole is only two inches in diameter. They typically brood one clutch in a season of three to 10 eggs. However, in some productive seasons, they may start a second brood. They incubate for about two weeks and the nestlings are active in the nest for about 30 days before leaving. They stick with the parents for the remainder of the summer, dispersing in the fall. A unique thing about red-headed woodpeckers is that they actually reuse cavities year after year, whereas most other woodpecker species in our area do not. Red-headed woodpeckers have a very opportunistic diet and it is very unlike most other woodpeckers in the United States, except for maybe the Lewis's woodpecker of our western areas. They do not excavate into trees to find grubs to eat. Rather, they often hawk for insects in meadows, much like a bluebird does. They eat invertebrates like grasshoppers and crickets, spiders, but they also eat an abundance of nuts like acorns and beech nuts and berries often when they are available. On occasion, they'll even raid a bird nest to eat the eggs or eat a small mouse. Often they take their prey to their chopping block on a fence post, or they stash it somewhere else to eat later. I've even seen them feeding on cracked corn in feeders or in corn cribs on farms. When it comes to the conservation history of red-headed woodpeckers, it's a little bit of a roller coaster ride. In the 1800s, when there was eastward forest fragmentation and our forests were becoming less and less abundant, they expanded east. They also expanded westward as, as I said earlier, utility poles were built. But by the 1900s, things were starting to change. The chestnut blight and Dutch elm disease had eliminated a couple of food sources of the red-headed woodpecker. However, it had provided an abundance of dead trees. Eventually, those dead trees fall down and no longer can provide for that species, so then their numbers could be impacted negatively. Historically, the red-headed woodpecker's numbers were considered healthy enough to be a nuisance bird. In fact, John James Audubon himself claimed that he shot 100 red-headed woodpeckers in one day as they all continued to descend on one single cherry tree. So not only were they a nuisance to fruit farmers, but they were also seen as preventing progress as they were often perching on utility poles that were being put up headed west. In the early 20th century, things got harder for red-headed woodpeckers. Farms that were once widespread and small with lots of fields and dead trees turned into row crops, and those farms used pesticides, which impacted the population and health of their prey species. 
Also, wooden fence posts were replaced with metal fence posts. And traffic speed limits increased along roadways, which meant that as birds were perching and foraging along roadsides, they often were hit and killed. Additionally, the pastures where cattle used to feed were decreasing in number as the cattle were being more and more consolidated into feedlots. So feeding and nesting territories were reduced significantly. On top of that, the prevalence of an invasive species called the European starling started to have a major impact on competition for nesting sites. This species, which was introduced in the late 1800s, spread quickly across the United States and, liking the same habitat as red-headed woodpeckers, would compete for nest holes. Due to many of the reasons just listed, the pre-1970s more stable population of red-headed woodpeckers in Michigan began declining rapidly. By 1980, they had declined about 40%, and by the mid-90s, 90% of their original population pre-1970. The Michigan Breeding Bird Atlas in 1983 to 1988 conducted surveys in townships across Michigan to find out where the breeding birds were and what their populations were. They were present in 47% of townships. In fact, they counted 1,743 pairs, and you can see that map on the left. In the second Breeding Bird Atlas survey in 2002 to 2008, they were only present in 21.1% of townships and had been reduced to 870 pairs counted. It is estimated that only 8,000 pairs were in total in Michigan at about 2010. They are currently listed in Michigan as a species of special concern as they are vulnerable to population decline and potentially becoming threatened or endangered. In the book, The Birds of Ottawa County, an Annotated Checklist, they are listed as fairly uncommon year-round residents Breeding has been confirmed. They are most abundant in the spring and fall migration seasons from late April to mid-May and in particular along our lakeshores where they migrate. They are also mostly abundant in the fall migration from September into early October. Most of the nesting in Ottawa County is also along the lakeshore in our oak forests. These areas most resemble the habitat they need because they contain widely spread oak and beech trees with plenty of snags. As the emerald ash borer has moved through our area, killing all of our ash trees, this has also increased the nesting areas available to red-headed woodpeckers and we've recently seen an uptick in numbers. However, long-term viability of that increased population is somewhat in question as Eventually, those ash trees will fall down and no longer provide nesting habitat for the woodpeckers. Ottawa County Parks has been at the forefront of conservation by focusing on providing habitat for a variety of different species through management of its land. At Stearns Creek Park in particular, we've been working to restore an oak pine savanna habitat by cutting out the old Christmas tree farm trees that were overgrown there, and by maintaining and invigorating the seed bed with fire. Only time will tell if the red-headed woodpecker will return to this site. Thanks so much for watching this bird profile in the red-headed woodpecker, a brief natural history of this unique woodpecker species. For more information on Ottawa County Parks, our programs, and in particular on birding in this area, you can visit the website www.miottawa.org birding.